welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I am going to be going over a very important topic if you are on your fitness journey, and that is what is a caloric deficit and how to calculate one. But before I get started, if you are enjoying my videos, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and you can ring the little bell to turn notifications on so you'll get notified when a new YouTube video goes up. So today's video is going to be very numbers heavy. We're gonna be doing quite a bit of calculations. So if you want to do them along with me, have a calculator handy, but if you don't, that's totally okay. I will try to make this as simple to understand as possible. And on that note, if you are doing my FitBody app, then you don't need to do any of these calculations because the app does it for you. It has a macro calculator which calculates your caloric needs based off of everything that I'm about to go over in this video. Plus the meal plan is completely custom. So once it calculates those calories and macros for you and you go to the meal plan, Every single meal has custom portions according to your macros. It is a very sophisticated meal plan. I haven't seen anything like it, which is why I created it. So if you are following the app, like I said, everything is all done for you. If you're not, then there is a seven day free trial where you can try it out. I will put a link in the description below. Not only does it have the meal plan portion that's completely custom, but it has three different workout programs, new workouts every two weeks beginner, intermediate, advanced levels, and so much more. Okay, this video is not intended to be a plug for the app, so I will continue. So what is a caloric deficit? So how many calories your body needs to maintain its current body weight is called your caloric maintenance. And a caloric deficit is subtracting 500 calories from that maintenance number. So let's say your caloric maintenance is 2,500 calories, you would subtract 500 from that and your caloric deficit would be 2000 calories. And this means that you would need to eat 2000 calories a day in order to lose an average of one pound per week. That is like the quickest, easiest way to describe what a caloric deficit is, but there's a lot more that goes into how to get that number. So I'm going to go over three different methods of how to calculate your caloric needs each of which have kind of pros and cons. Before we dive into those methods, I do want to point out that typically when discussing a caloric deficit, people usually look to their nutrition, which is good because nutrition absolutely has the biggest impact on your results. You can't outwork a bad diet in the gym, okay? So this is why nutrition has such a big focus as it absolutely should. However, with that being said, you can also create a caloric deficit through your workouts and through your energy expenditure. So I want you to keep that in mind. I will revisit this topic at the end, but it's just something that I want you to know because we're gonna be focusing a lot on numbers as far as what we eat, but that is not the only way to create a caloric deficit. All right, for the three different methods of calculating your caloric needs, the first one and the most simple one is a very straight line method of taking your body weight and multiplying that number anywhere from 12 up to 19. Those ranges depend on what your goals are. So if you are wanting to lose weight, you would multiply your body weight by 12 to 13. If you are wanting to maintain your weight, you would multiply your body weight by 15 to 16. And if you are wanting to gain weight, you would multiply your body weight by 18 to 19. So I'm going to use me and my stats as an example in this video. So I weigh 140 pounds, give or take a few pounds. I don't weigh myself on a regular basis. And multiply that by 15. So I'm gonna be using the maintenance range. And that would give me 2,100 calories. Now, if I were to go on the upper end of that range to 16, then 140 pounds times 16 equals 2,240 calories. So there is a bit of a range. And being someone who enjoys <laughs> math and crunching numbers, I like to take the average of those numbers to get kind of a middle ground since there is that range. So if I were to take the average of 2100 and 2240 calories, that would bring me to 2170 calories. So this would be how many calories I need to maintain my current body weight with this straight line method. The pros to this method is it's super easy. Literally just calculate your body weight by a number and voila. The drawbacks to that, the cons to that, is that it's not very accurate. It is a ballpark figure. And the reason why is because it doesn't take into account lean body mass 
or body fat. So for someone who has high lean body mass, um, meaning they have a lot of muscle, that calculation is going to underestimate how many calories they need because of their TDEE, which I'm gonna get into later in the video. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, for someone who has a high body fat percentage, it is going to overestimate how many calories they need because it's not taking into account how much body fat they have versus how much lean muscle mass they have and how many calories you need is largely dependent on your lean body mass. So I would say this method is okay for someone who is kind of in the middle of the road. They're neither super lean with a lot of lean body mass and they're neither overweight or have a high body fat percentage. So with that being said, the second method is the Harris Benedict formula. And this is probably the most common calculation or formula that you see used. It is the one that I also use in the app. It is more precise than the first method because it takes into account your age, height, and weight weight. However, it still has that tendency to underestimate calories for someone who has high lean body mass or a lot of muscle or overestimate calories for someone who has a high body fat percentage. That is something to keep in mind. Now the calculations for this are very in depth. I'm going to pop them on the screen right here for you. And they are different for men and women. So really important to keep that in mind. And we are going to use me as an example. So I'm going to put on the screen my age, height, and weight, which are are the three things that you need for this formula. And then that is going to give me my BMR. And your BMR is your basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories your body needs at rest and for basic life sustaining functions. So this number does not take into account any of your activities. So it's really important to know this is pretty much if you are laying in bed and doing nothing else all day. So once you have your BMR, this is where you take into account your activity level. So I'm gonna pop below the standard multipliers for activity levels. And in my case, for this example equation, we are going to say that I have an activity level of 1.55, which is moderately active. So taking my BMR, multiplying that by 1.55, that results in 2,209 calories per day. And this would be my TDEE, which is my total daily energy expenditure. And what that means is this is the amount of calories that my body needs to maintain my current body body weight given my age, height, weight, and my activity level. That is method number two. Now on to method number three. This is the most precise and accurate formula of calculating how many calories you need. And this is the catch McArdle formula. I hope I'm saying that right. And the reason why this is the most accurate is because this formula takes into account your lean body mass. However, in order to get this number, you have to get your body fat measured, which can be done via a DEXA scan, which is what I recommend. You can do the bod pod, you can do hydrostatic weighing, which is where you go underwater and they measure your body fat. There is bioelectrical impedance analysis, which is your at home scales or the handheld thing. So that is a BIA method of measuring your body fat, or you can do calipers and calipers are probably the most accessible. They're like maybe five bucks on Amazon, but they are not the most accurate. I did do a body fat series on YouTube where I did all of those different methods and I compared all of my results and the DEXA scan was hands down the most accurate. So if you just look up your city DEXA scan, I highly recommend doing so. It gives you so much information about your body and your results over time. I could go on and on about the body fat topic, which I do in the other YouTube videos. So if you're interested in it, I highly recommend watching those. So if you do have your body fat percentage, if you've done a DEXA scan, yay, <laughs> then this is where you can use this formula and it will be the most accurate. And again, I'm gonna use myself as an example, I don't actually know my exact body fat percentage. I haven't done a DEXA scan in a while, which is linked to my fertility journey. If you don't know, I have lots of YouTube videos on that as well. The DEXA scan is essentially an x-ray machine where they originated from is in hospitals and from needing to measure people's bone density. And so since it is essentially an x-ray machine, it does have a very, very low dose of radiation. Since I've been trying to conceive, my doctors have told me ex nay on the x-rays. <laughs> so I have not done a DEXA scan for a while for that reason. So I'm just going to estimate my body fat. I have gained weight recently again because of my fertility journey. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm at a 23% body fat right now. 
So for the purposes of the calculation, you need your age, your body weight, and then your body fat percentage. So I am 31, I weigh 140 pounds, and let's say that I am 23% body fat. That means I have lean body mass of 110 pounds and my body fat is 30 pounds. So for the equation to calculate your BMR in this method, you multiply your body weight in kilos by 21.6, which equals in this case, 1450 calories. So again, this would be my BMR in this method. And then the next step is to take into account my activity level and to keep everything consistent, we'll use the same multiplier of 1.55 for moderate activity. So 1450 times 1.55 is 2248 calories. These would be my maintenance calories in the third method. So we have calculated my maintenance calories with three different methods. And if we look at those numbers, you'll see that they actually are pretty similar, but there are a few reasons for that. So first I wanna say that since the third method came out so close to the second method, what that means is that I pretty accurately estimated what my body fat percentage is. And then as for the first method, the reason why that is so close to the other two numbers is simply because I'm kind of in that middle range of, I don't have a lot of lean body mass, and I'm also not significantly overweight. So that is where that first method may be a good ballpark for you. But if you are on either end of the spectrum, that is where I absolutely would not recommend using that method. So as for the other two, which are more accurate and most accurate, those are the ones that I would recommend using. And like I said, if you are using my Fit Body app or you wanna try the seven day free trial, then it is going to use method number two, the Harris Benedict formula. All right, so we have our three different maintenance calorie equations. I'm just going to stick with the Harris Benedict results of 2209 calories. So this is the final step where you would take into consideration your fitness goals. So do you want to lose weight, maintain your weight, or gain weight? If you want to lose weight, then that is called the caloric deficit. If you want to maintain weight, that is a caloric maintenance. And if you want to gain weight, that is a caloric surplus. So as far as the calculations go, to create a caloric deficit, you need your maintenance calories, which is why we did all of those calculations up to now, and you need to subtract 500 from that number. So in my case, 2209, subtracting 500 calories from that, my caloric deficit numbers would be 1709. If I wanted to maintain weight, I wouldn't change anything at all. It'd be 2209. But if I wanted to gain weight, then I would add 500 calories, which would be 2709. And the reason why you hear 500 is kind of this magic number when it comes to creating a caloric deficit or a caloric surplus is because there are 3,500 calories and one pound of stored body fat. So if you're wanting to lose one pound, then you need to create a caloric deficit of 3,500 calories over the course of a week. Divide that by seven days you get 500 calories. So that is where that number comes from. And I will say that yes, you can create a bigger caloric deficit than 500 calories. I would not recommend doing so unless you are in the higher body fat percentage ranges. It gets really dangerous when you start cutting calories and cutting and cutting and cutting. There absolutely is a point of where you shouldn't be cutting any more calories. It's just not safe. It's not efficient when it comes to fat loss and just overall body recomposition and your progress. So I personally have never recommended more than a 700 caloric deficit because like I said, it's just not an efficient way to get progress and you kind of, you know, will eventually hit a wall. So with that being said, that perfectly brings me back to the point that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that there are two ways to create caloric deficit. One is through reduction of your calories and the second is through your energy expenditure, AKA your workouts. So whether you create a caloric deficit of 500 calories from let's say dropping your calories by 300 and working out to where you burn 200 calories a day, it doesn't matter. As long as you come to that 500 caloric deficit, and ideally you would be creating a caloric deficit between both your nutrition and your workouts, you can do it via one way or the other, but both cases tend to get a bit extreme when it comes to under eating or over exercising. So that's where marrying the both of those in the middle is the ideal case scenario and definitely the best for a long-term healthy, sustainable fitness journey. So if you are someone that you're like, I'm already at super low calories, I can't lower them anymore, A, don't. I 
definitely wouldn't recommend lowering them anymore because essentially food is fuel. If you're continuously creating a bigger and bigger caloric deficit, you're creating a bigger and bigger energy deficit. And then you're not even going to be able to fully exert yourself and crush your workouts and have that energy expenditure piece. So I definitely recommend in those cases, instead of turning to your nutrition, look to your workouts and building on your strength, which is going to help improve your metabolic rate and help you burn calories over the long run. And even at rest. So strength training, yay! That's absolutely something that should be a part of everyone's workouts if they are wanting to see progress in body recomposition and more. There is one thing that I want to point out when it comes to being in a caloric deficit, and that is if you are in a caloric deficit and you're losing weight, the key word is weight. Is that fat that you're losing or is it muscle? So if you are only doing cardio and you're not eating enough protein, then that weight that you're losing is very likely muscle loss, which is something that you want to avoid. When your body turns to muscle to burn it for energy and use it as a fuel source, that is called muscle catabolism. And this happens when you are either under eating or you are not eating enough protein. So your body needs protein in order to repair and rebuild and protect your muscles. So weight loss is is not where it's at. <laughs> weight loss should not be the main focus. It should be losing body fat. So it's a really important thing to keep in mind that you need to be eating enough protein, which is one of the three macronutrient food groups in order to preserve your muscle, repair and rebuild it and not lose it because especially for women, we don't have the testosterone levels that men do to build muscle that easily. So when we build it, we need to keep it and protect it and eat enough protein in order to do so. I can go into way more detail on that topic in a macro YouTube video if you would like. And I would love to hear what you thought of this video. Was it helpful? Do you have any other questions? Did I confuse you <laughs> with all those numbers? And if I did, just head to the Fit Body app and it's gonna do all these calculations for you and thanks so much for tuning in I will see you guys next time <laughs>